These fragrances here have some serious wow factor. They really turn heads pretty much everywhere you go. That's kind of the name of the game for a lot of guys out there. You don't really want to blend in with everybody else necessarily. You kind of want to use a fragrance more so as an accessory to help you stand out. Just like choosing a nice watch or a nice pair of shoes or something like that. It's something just kind of cool that maybe not everybody does. And you can easily wear fragrances that have you a little bit more low key. You know, if you just wear something that is, is very common and, and very simplistic, you know, that's something where people might just assume you just smell like you got out of the shower or you have a deodorant on or something like that. But when you go for some of these options, they really stand out and people know that that's not, you know, soap or something like that. They know that these mean business. I'll link all these down below if you want to check any of these out. Let's get things kicked off with Le Mans Elixir. What a great release, you know, the elixirs, right? They're, they're all over the place already. Some are good, some aren't. This one is fantastic. And the way I think about it is take the name Elixir out of the equation. Who cares what flanker it is, right? Let's just judge this one off the scent for a minute. When you kind of approach it that way, this stuff is great, but it's easy to get caught up in just kind of the annoyance of this brand does an Elixir, so now all of these other brands are gonna follow suit. Because really what this one is at the end of the day is a much more mature version of all of the others. The original, Ultramail, Le Mans Le Parfum, and everything else in between. Most of the time, those are leaning in the more young and, and kind of playful direction. This one does have a bit more of a maturity to it, although still nothing crazy. I mean, this is definitely probably more of a, a younger guy's trendy scent overall. But I do think that that kind of nice honey, tobacco, vanilla mixture here is really, really good. This one smells great when you're spraying it on and you're smelling it close up, you know, which is what you would do probably if you were testing it in stores or something. But when you actually get this one in the air, man, so, so much better. And, and being able to catch just kind of the downstream effect of this scent is amazing. And it's definitely worth experiencing at least one point. If you didn't want to go for a full bottle and you just wanted to sample it first, whatever the case may be, at least get your nose on it. That way you know what everybody else is talking about because this one is not gonna be going away anytime soon. Okay, next up we have uh, essentially kind of the, the brand new Aqua de Jo Profondo Eau de Parfum 2024 re-release is kind of what this one is. So I just did a buying guide on all of the Aqua de Jo's. You know, like I've said with the buying guides, they get out of date pretty quickly at the rate that these brands are putting out flankers every year. So like I'll go a year or two in between doing a buying guide and eventually it's like, okay, I should do another one to update it because they've come out with a few more releases. It's kind of what happened here, although it's a little bit confusing. I didn't buy this one at first because I just assumed it was a rebottle and nothing else. Started seeing some buzz online about how there was a differentiation between this and Profondo 2020. So finally, I broke down and bought it. And again, I covered this already, but yeah, there is a little bit of a difference. Uh, this newer one here, the EDP 2024, actually is a little bit more bright, has a little bit more of a pop off the opening. Not to say that the original Profondo wasn't fresh and invigorating off the top, because it was. Real nice orange, mineral note, C note scent, right? So is this, but it does have a bit more of a bright, pop, kind of like a nice sparkle and effervescent tinge to it off the opening. And that's the main difference for me is the opening. You know, once you start getting into the dry down, it's your usual tropes for Profondo and things that smell like it, kind of aquatic notes and mineral notes and some aromatics. So yeah, is it enough of a difference to rush out and buy this one if you already have the original? Probably not, you know, at least not for most. If you're someone who's diehard and you really want to own them all, maybe, but you don't need me to tell you that, you're going to buy it anyway. Um, but, you know, if you're in the market for a Profondo and you don't have it yet, I would say this new re-release here, it might be the one to get. It really, I guess, what it would come down to is whichever one you could get for a better price. Right now, the, the original Profondo is going to be more readily available on discounters, so maybe that one. But you know, once this new one starts really working its way and just becoming more popular on discounters because it's what's gonna be produced now, that will definitely be a fantastic purchase. They definitely didn't go in the wrong direction with that re-release. I think they might have made a slight improvement. It's a really good head turner. People love that stuff in the summer heat. Next up, we have Platinum Leather by Carolina Herrera. 
of their more exclusive line, which you know, all of these are going to be two hundred plus dollars for a hundred ml. So it's not like they're going down to a fifty ml or seventy five or something like that. You know, they're giving you full size, but you still got to pay up for them. For a lot of people, you might think two hundred and twenty, two hundred and forty dollars for a Carolina Herrera. That's insane. And really, when I was looking at this line first. I thought the same. The first one that I got was Bronze Tonka, just on a complete whim. Had really not much thought into it other than, you know, I should try that. I don't know why, but I did. I got it in, and I was like, okay, wait a minute. I'm on to something here. It was fantastic. Bronze Tonka is an amazing scent. From there, I was like, okay, I need to explore this more because if this one is that good, what are all these other ones going to be like? And just from there, it was hit after hit. Iris Empire, Mystery Tobacco, Virgin Mint, Platinum Leather. These are amazing scents. Really, I find myself reaching for these more than some of my really popular name brand niche fragrances. Like They really are good and they have a little bit of everything for everybody and a little bit of everything for any situation, any time of year. Platinum Leather actually has a bit of a freshness to it. It's not just heavy, strong leather. It's got leather, musk, and patchouli, and so primarily it's that musk note that's giving it a bit of a fresh kind of uh, component in here. You saw the atomizer too. Great atomizer. Really, really nice smell. The leather also is not too animalic or too earthy or anything like um, you know Tuscan Leather by Tom Ford, which I always go back to that one, but that's a pretty extreme example of leather. This is not that. It's more of a, a smooth, soft, creamy leather note with some other sweeter notes as well really, really well done release. And really, no one else out there is going to be wearing this. Nobody's ever heard of it. Nobody's going to be spending the money on it anyway, so it's a great way to stand out too. And next up, we have Valentino Womo Intense, a little bit more of a popular common release or common choice, I should say, just because it's been out for a while and it shot up because people were comparing it to Dior Homme Intense, which is a valid comparison. So what's the difference? Well, it has the iris. That's a similarity. But this one utilizes quite a bit of leather, okay? So leather and iris, whereas Dior Homme Intense is more of like an iris lavender, slight sweet chocolatey accord. This one doesn't really have that. It just has more of a, a nice masculine leather. It's a little bit less like, I don't know, people call like lipsticky or smells like a purse or something, Dior Homme Intense that is. This one doesn't have as much of that going on. It's actually a little bit more fresh. It's a little bit more designer level, even though they're both designers. It's a little bit more of a safe release if you really wanted to boil it down. And same with Gentleman Eau de Parfum. I would probably rank them as Dior Homme Intense being my favorite, Valentino being up next, Gentleman Eau de Parfum being after that. If you're just focusing on those three because they're always kind of grouped together, that's how I would rank them. The Dior being the most unique, the Gentleman being the most designer down version of that DNA. And this one falls somewhere right in the middle, which is a good spot to be. Because in one hand, you've got a little bit more of a kind of uh, connoisseur, fragrance lover styling that that you know we kind of really like because it is somewhat unique but then on the other hand you do have quite a bit of mass appeal out of this one as well a lot of people find this one to be very attractive especially in the cooler times of the year which is coming right up it's a good time to wear this one next up we have low midi all parfum by guerlain this stuff is amazing i've been talking about it a lot and of course it's new it's already hit discounters like fragrance buy has it but i'm telling you guys this is so good and it's using the almond and all of the the usual findings in this line and they're adding in a nice sweet boozy accord which smells amazing and it fits right in with this dna too it's definitely not out of place it's not different enough to where it's no longer something that belongs in this line but it's also not so similar to where it's a redundant purchase they they hit the nail on the head and I have to give them credit because they've been able to strike that balance throughout the entirety of the line. The Eau de Parfum, the Extreme, then the fresher ones like Cool, Cologne, Platine Privé. Those three together would be redundant, but since they've been released and discontinued and released and discontinued and so on, they're kind of spread out and so not quite, although I guess you could make an argument there. But for the most part, they've done a good job of keeping them separate. Lintense being probably one of the least talked about, but also one of the most extreme, being that it's really, really smoky. Like it's got smoke and chili pepper. It's spicy stuff. 
Um, so they have just kind of a little bit of everything for everybody. No matter what level of intensity you want, they have it. Even all the way back to the Eau de Toilette, which right now is one of the freshest ones. Still a nice light almond, great scent that is a little bit underutilized as well. And this one is just, it's, it's becoming a favorite of mine already. And I, it hasn't even been really cold enough for me to wear it like I want to. So once we can really start getting into fall and winter and I can really start wearing this one consistently when it's weather appropriate to do so, man, this one's really gonna shoot to the top. This is gonna be right up there with the extreme and the Eau de Parfum. I mean, it already is, but man, this stuff, they really did a good job. Parfums de Marley Herod, a really, really good premium tobacco and vanilla scent. I love tobacco fragrances. You probably have noticed that and a little bit of a trend if you've watched my videos for long enough. You know, Dolce & Gabbana, the one eau de parfum is what started that obsession for me and this was years ago and that's a pretty mild tobacco scent. Um, and then from there, just was going and going and start getting into things like Spice Bomb Extreme and all of these others and it's like, man, what do I like so much about these fragrances? You lay them all out and it's like, yeah, pretty good tobacco note in most of these. So it's kind of what it is. And same thing here, it's just a, really nice red pipe tobacco smokiness with sweet vanilla, nice amber, and just a little bit of a peppery nuance as well. This is phenomenal. And I've mentioned this before in other videos. I don't know what it is, but I just tend to forget about this one a little bit. Because when it comes to Parfums de Marley, the guys at the top of the food chain are Leighton and, you know, even like Carlisle and things like that, Sedley, Greenlee. They're just more common, I think. Whereas Herod, it should be up there, and maybe it is, but for me and my collection and just what I have, for some reason, it always gets kind of pushed out, and I, I tend to forget about it sometimes. But then I revisit it, and I, I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm like, man, why do I not wear this more when I have the chance to when it's cold outside? Definitely going to make a point to try to get this one on more this year because I just love it. Really good performance as well. I wish that they would do more of this. I mean... The new Altair is great, but man, there was something about the uh, like Leighton, Godolphin, Pegasus era of fragrances when they were, those were all kind of just out and really popularized. Those are just kind of next level, and I hope that they kind of can circle around and do some of that again. Maybe you know, maybe they are already, and I don't realize it yet until those get old, and then you know, just kind of how the cycle goes. But some of their their you know initial releases were amazing. Last up for this video, we'll end it with another niche, although this one is designer price. It's Mansara Tonka Cola, small little 60 ml. That was all I could muster up at the time because it's all they had. I was buying it before it was available, like at retail and stuff. And so that was all they had. At some point I'm gonna splurge and get the big bottle, but hasn't been high on my priority list because really, why do I need to do that anyway? Just kind of for looks. But you know, when I smell this one, I'm telling you, Roja Enigma, but more wearable and just their take. Just kind of like Sadrat Boise. That one gets compared heavily to Creed Aventus. Maybe there's some merit there, but they still really do their own thing. Same thing with this. Got cherry, Coca-Cola, nice cinnamon note. So it's warm, sweet, spicy, and fizzy and has like a cola, bubbly, carbonated texture to it. And that's what I love so much about this stuff. Does it smell like Coca-Cola? Not really, right? It's much more sweet and uh, just, just kind of woody, right? <laughs> Which Coca-Cola isn't really. But it does have that fizzy, carbonated, crisp, and kind of refreshing Coca-Cola texture. So that's kind of where this one fits in. You could say it's like cherry Coca-Cola. Yeah, maybe a little bit, but I think that's more or less marketing Coca-Cola note, which is a pretty cool angle. Overall, this is probably one of their, their better modern releases, I would say. I mean, this stuff is really, really, really good. All right, you guys, that's gonna do it for me. Some jaw-dropping fragrances that turn heads all the time. So I'm gonna link all these down below. Uh, there might be a few of these up for uh, sampling on my website. You can head over there, chaosfragrances.com, and, and shop around. We're selling decants and all that stuff. We're gonna work on blowing the collection up, is offering as many as we can. Um, what we're trying to do is offer free samples in every order. When uh, a sweepstakes is running, when you purchase decants or anything of that nature, you get entries in to win a huge fragrance bundle, 20 plus fragrances. We just wrapped one up now. And so we're really trying to kind of provide a lot of value and also give you the opportunity to try stuff without having to buy a full bottle because 
what I've noticed is, and everybody's noticed this, the prices on designer, especially, and niche are not going down. They're just continuing to rise. So, you know, if you want to start doing some sampling and you can't find them in stores near you, we're trying to offer a way for you to do that, but also throw in more perks as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.